Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you have seen us admire, reverse engineer and power up a Soviet-era space clock flown in the Soyuz TM spacecraft. Now that it is working, it begs the obvious question. How accurate is it? So hello again, we are back with our clock and now that it's working, we wanted to do a little bit of metrology, find out how precise it is. And Master Ken has it all figured out. So I've traced out most of the, the boards. And this is the board that has the, the crystal on it over here. And that um, goes through some dividers and should end up with one hertz here. That's a crystal. N not connected to anything, it's just floating. Well, all the connections are under the crystal, so it was very hard to figure out what was connected to what. But okay, but, but, I, but it, it oscillates. I, I finally got it sorted out. It's basically oh, um, yeah, two, two inverters. Oh, it's a, it's a simple like, basic crystal oscillator. Yeah. Oh, okay, just the simplest you can do. And so you think we, we clog it out here? So th this is going to be your 1 megahertz on the resistor, um, but we're going to follow it after it goes through all these divide by 10 and should give us 1 hertz out on the other side. And it's all on the same board? Yeah. Or? All right. So, okay. So that board is exactly relatively accessible, I think. If I go okay, over yeah, here, I have to flip the clock. This, it's this board. Is Yep. Right. So here, here's the crystal. Uh -huh. um, th this chip is the inverters for the oscillator, so there should be one megahertz over here. That goes to a bunch of divide by ten chips, and then one hertz over at this side. Okay. And then he here are the three transformers, the pulse transformers for the start, stop, and reset signals. Oh, we can try that to, to, to check if, if we can make that work. And on the Instrumentation side, I don't have everything today, so I'll have to do it in several days, but we have a frequency meter with uh, a quartz source clock, uh, no oven. Uh, I have the higher quality frequency meter uh, with a uh, quartz oscillator in an oven. This one's calibrated from last year at minus 26 part per billion, to be precise. I have a GPS discipline oscillator that I can use as input to those, so that could now should make it um, atomic clock precise. Uh, and hopefully, Marcel will show up with a cesium clock, and uh, that, that will have to do in, in another day. Oh, yeah, you have the, uh, the uh, GPS discipline oscillator. Yeah, this is this is amazing. This is a few hundred bucks or something like that over eBay, and it. It works well, but we need to be, uh, we need to have direct sight of the satellites. So here is my GPS uh, discipline oscillator, and then we had it hooked up. So it goes, the antenna goes out the window, and it's all wired up past the analog computer. All back in the lab, and here we go coming out here on my uh, on my universal counter so this is 10 to the 6th so this doesn't count so you just have to look at that yeah it's 20 parts per billion I see let, let me recalibrate that one so it's at zero I think we're getting closer I think I am calibrated So now I'm hooked up with that one. So this one doesn't have an oven quartz source. It has the regular one, so it's, it's still off. But I can clock it off this one. So if I clock it externally, it should go to, okay. So now they're measuring the same thing. We were having some trouble getting good measurements, stable ones. We got no plus, more or less one megahertz. And then we look at the signal and it's super jittery. That's a clock signal at one megahertz. You can sort of see how jittery it is. And then if you stop it and start to look at it, 
it's clean for most of it and then you see these things where the, the oscillator seems to have a hiccup and it goes fine for another while and then here's another one of them here's another one and that's, that's far off that is really weird something is not quite right here's another one on our oscillator let me take a, a, a frequency measurement of this but it won't be stable you can see how terrible that is it's 20% persistence <laughs> it's completely jittery and now I have it hooked up to the frequency meters uh, and this one is jumping 1.012 megahertz which is fairly far off, it's 2% this one which I would trust less is 1.026 but they are yeah, so they are triggered out of the same clock and they don't, don't even measure the same thing what I think is happening here is that both counters are very fast and very sensitive they are counting the glitches as additional pulses they appear at about 20 kilohertz rates, hence the weird measurement. So that, that's a tricky circuit because it's an al analog circuit made with logic parts. So nobody knows what actually happens except the designer of this thing. We should try to measure a second, see if it averages out, but definitely our, our clock circuit is not right. So now I have the one second on the period counter. There we go, so we see the one second coming out and the measurement that's better, so in average it's okay it's 1.0000 second so on average it's okay but it's incredibly jittery at 1 megahertz, megahertz. maybe they just didn't care right? it's as fine as it, it will get you to the moon okay I guess or if you're averaging over a million pulses, you can take a lot of jitter. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, here's the result. It's precise to the one percent, point one percent, point oh one percent. It's that. half of point oh one percent. Now we can translate in what 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 error it is on the mission, but pretty low, I guess. The point oh oh five percent is a few oh, seconds oh, a day four seconds a day four seconds a day and it's way better than the speck of the clock yeah 30 seconds per day is their they're advertised okay so it's 10 times better than that nice yeah. but it, it's still not very good by my clock standards that's true so yeah the manual says 30 seconds a day and if you use the external clock it's 4.5 seconds a day Okay, so that w which is why they wanted the external clock. So another possibility is that this was supposed to be clocked externally by the much more stable master source in the spaceship. And what we are measuring here is the short-term internal backup function. Mr. Mike, Hello. long time no see! Yeah, how's it going? You're doing good? You're busy you're flying, flying rockets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what you get? Plus the back. Oh, -ho. Sure, yes. excellent. So yeah. what's, what's in the case? Uh, listings. <laughs> That's a lot of it's, listings. It's show and tell. It's show and tell day here. <laughs> Everybody brings their own missile computer, their Apollo <laughs> cases. Uh, we have a, a cesium clock in that's going to come. That's oh, you haven't seen the Soyuz clock. clock? No, I haven't. All right, come, come see it. It, it. It's over here. It's over there. <laughs> I, I added the, the little flag. And Lori was completely mad when I turned this flag. So Lori and my wife escaped communism, mm. and that wasn't a fun story. Right. Uh, actually, it was a disaster, and her two brothers went to education camp. So when I okay. unpacked this thing, she just went, went berserk. So, guys, it's not that we condone communism; is that we just celebrate good engineering for wherever it comes. It's it's 
<laughs> I mean, people in the comments say it's like setting a VCR clock is like close to impossible. Oh, I, I missed a digit. No, I didn't. Oh, wow. And then if, if you screw it up, you have to redo it all over again, <laughs> you know, with gloves and all that stuff in space while your ship is stumbling. Wow. It's well within spec. The spec mm. was kind of a mechanical clock spec, like 30 seconds a day. This one does four seconds a day, which is rather poor for a spacecraft. For, for a spacecraft clock. Yeah, yeah, so I, uh, 4.2 seconds, this one. Yeah, and, and so it's a factor almost 200 worse than the Apollo spacecraft clock. Yeah. Right. The, uh, the computer designer review book has a section on the oscillator design for the computer. And uh -huh. uh, the, the board was upset about how uh, precise it was. In Apollo, the Apollo Guidance Computer Oscillator Module B7 provided the time reference for the entire spacecraft. The mission requirements ask for a precision of 2 parts per million over all conditions. This corresponds to about 0.17 seconds per day. However, the final B7 module acceptance test criterions were over 10 times tighter. 4.3 milliseconds a day at constant voltage and a normal 40C plus minus half a degree temperature control. 8.6 milliseconds a day for a plus minus 10% voltage excursion and 0.1 milliseconds a day for aging, which totals to a worst case of plus minus 13 milliseconds a day over temp voltage and aging. Unlike the Soyuz clock we have here, the B7 module was closely temperature controlled at 40C plus minus half a degree, which of course helps things considerably. But where the temperature controls to fail, there was a plus minus 26 milliseconds per day maximum allocated for 0 to 70C temperature excursions, still far, far below the mission requirements. The actual frequency drift was measured in flight for the whole Apollo 8 mission and was reported to be 953 microseconds per hour, or 23 milliseconds a day, over seven times better than the mission requirements. Maybe that's why the board got a bit ticked off by the over-engineering. They put in compensation for temperature and pressure and like everything they so, could think of. They uh -huh. thought it was over-engineered. Oh. Uh, MIT and Raytheon picked out a lot of like single-use components, some uh -huh. of which were kind of fragile to get it as accurate as possible. <laughs> oh, okay, so there was a special effort because it, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was like um, uh, below a um, um, millisecond of drift yeah. per hour? Something like that. Yeah, like 950 microsecond measured, which right. is incredible. Yeah. But back to our Soyuz clock, we ended up with a bit of an ambiguous result. The clock is good but not great. At 4 seconds per day, it is well under its 30 seconds per day spec, but this is still fairly imprecise by clock standards. The external clocking would also reduce the spec greatly, so maybe internal clocking was just backup. We can also see that the oscillator circuit has some glitches that cause very high jitter. We don't know if this was intended or if this is a problem. We'll try to get to the bottom of it and to further explore the other functions of the clock that are available through the spaceship connector. So I think we just got the smoking gun. I pretty much see, I think it happens every time we have that latch. That's when our clocks gets all frazzled. There you go, right there.